For automation people, it's pretty common for a lot of us to be nerds, okay? We're geeks, we're techies. We're in one of those categories of uh, socially inept people who gets a sparkle in their eyes whenever they see a bigger machine or a faster processor. You know, specs are interesting to us. Whereas it's just a phone to everybody else, to us, no, it's, it's got this many dots per inch resolution and this many nits of brightness and this many gigs of RAM and it, it's not USB 3, it's 3.1 and it's not Bluetooth 4, it's Bluetooth 5.4 and you know, I mean, we get all into this stuff and we get excited. Sometimes in our careers, that excitement can lead us, you know, kind of astray and lead us down a bad path. Um, as engineers, a lot of us, especially when we're younger, especially right out of school, we kind of want to work in the, the high technology stuff. I want to work with AI. I want to work with, you know, fancy instruments that, you know, normal people have never heard of. I want robots everywhere. And, you know, we, we kind of get that fat fantasy in our heads that we think, you know, I want to work in the highest tech industry there is because everybody there is making millions of dollars. No, not usually. Actually, when you're on the bleeding knife's edge of technology, and you prepare yourself to work in that level of technology and you focus on all of that, there's a problem. And that is that less than 5% of the companies in the world are really operating on that edge. They're really at that level of technology. So you, you work hard, you learn, you prepare yourself for that high, super high tech field and then eventually you get the job and that's great. But what happens when that job goes south? Okay, what happens when you get laid off or fired or the company closes down or it relocates to another country? You know, real life stuff can happen and that job's not gonna be there forever. Okay, you just lost your job. Where do you go now? Do you just go across the street and apply at the next company because they don't use that technology. In fact, in your whole city, maybe there was only one company that was at that level and now that job is, is not an option anymore. So where are you at? What do you do? Well, I guess you have to move and go somewhere else and you know try to find a, another job at that level of technology in some other city or some other country and if you if you see what I'm getting at here you know there's just not a lot of opportunity okay now something that's a lot less exciting and not nearly as romantic for us techies that is working at kind of the industry standard level of technology. The boring stuff. Why? Because everybody's using it. All of the factories in town have that level of technology. And that means there are jobs everywhere. That means that there's opportunity for you everywhere. That means there is if, if anything happens to your job today, you're not going to be struggling to pay your bills tomorrow because there's somewhere you can just drive across the street to. They'll hire you, you've got experience, and you're back up and running in a week or two and getting paid again. So that's something that I want you to consider when you're you know, thinking about exactly what level of industry and uh, technology you want to work with. The higher technology you go, one, it does not mean you're going to make more money. And two, it does mean you're going to have a harder time finding work and finding job opportunities. Lower technology, not nearly as exciting, but 
a lot more money. It's growing on trees. A lot more resources to learn and grow from. A lot more stability. So, you know, if you want to chase that, you know, technology dream, there's no problem with it. But just keep that in mind that the trade-off is it might not always be very easy to find a job.